Good morning, and welcome to our Mass from the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We pray that you and your loved ones are in good health. Please check our parish website for updates and for links to devotions and other information, as well as how to continue to financially support the parish as we journey through this virus pandemic. Thank you for your continued support. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our entrance hymn is number 647 in the Catholic Book of Worship, I Know That My Redeemer Lives, number 647. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Today's Mass will be offered for the repose of the soul of Maud Matthews, one of our longtime parishioners who died this week. We pray for her and for the consolation of her family. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us for the times we have failed to be merciful, to be compassionate to one another, and we ask the Lord's forgiveness. God of mercy on us, forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have celebrated the Paschal festivities may be your gift, may by your gift hold fast to them in the way that we live our lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Since Paul had appealed to the emperor, Festus sent Paul to Rome. When he came into Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. Three days later, he called together the local leaders of the Jews. 
When they had assembled, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors, yet I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. When they had examined me, the Romans wanted to release me, because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to the emperor, even though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is for the sake of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is number 176 in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 176.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After he was raised from the dead, Jesus appeared to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias and indicated the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is that that's going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? And Jesus said to Peter, If it is my will that he remain until I come, what is it that to you? Follow me. So the rumor spread in the community that this disciple would not die, yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. But if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did, if every one of them were written down. I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we see Paul living under house arrest in Rome, awaiting trial, and yet in those challenging circumstances, he still boldly proclaimed the kingdom of God without hindrance. That is a good lesson for us that no matter how trying the circumstances we face, God still gives us opportunities to share our faith, to witness to our faith. There is no situation that is a hindrance to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and how Jesus has changed our lives and we share that joy of the gospel, that joy that comes from the gift of God's love and forgiveness. Each of us is called to use our unique talents and gifts to bring the gospel to the world. The risen Lord can work through any one of us in a way that is distinctive and unique to each of us. Peter was chosen by Christ as the chief shepherd who would lay down his life for his sheep in Rome, where St. Paul would do the same. Yet John had the role, as we know, of looking after Mary, the mother of Jesus. And he lived to write down that gospel, which we have in our reading today, in which we end it today. Because this is the end of the Easter season today, and tomorrow is Pentecost. How we witness to Jesus is distinctive to each one of us, reflecting our unique gifts, our abilities, our limitations, our personality, and our temperament. The Lord needs a rich diversity of disciples if he is to express himself fully in today's world. The Lord needs us all, regardless of our age or even our state of health. He has a role and a mission for each one of us. The wonderful Saint Cardinal John Henry Newman, as you know, was just recently this year canonized. And he wrote, and I quote, God has created me to do some definite service. God has committed some work to me which has not been committed to another. I have my mission. I may never know it in this life, but I shall be told it in the next. God has not created me from nothing. I shall do good. I shall do God's work. I shall be an angel of peace a preacher of truth in my own place while not intending it. If I I will trust God. If I am in sickness, my sickness may serve God. If I am in sorrow, my sorrow may serve God. God does nothing in vain. We offer up our prayers of intercession today for Holy Father Pope Francis and Archbishop Peter and all those who lead and guide our church and shepherd our church during these difficult times, we pray to the Lord. We pray that we may all realize that all of creation is connected and interdependent and that we must care for the earth, our common home, we pray to the Lord. For healing and comfort and hope for all those impacted by the coronavirus pandemic, we pray to the Lord. We pray for an end to racism and violence and and certainly intolerance in our society, that the love and peace and justice of Christ may reign upon us, we pray to the Lord. For all the sick and for all those health care workers and caregivers at home who 
Give compassionate care to them, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, and we pray especially today for Maud Matthews, and for the consolation of our family, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray now for the prayers that are in the quiet of your hearts today. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, you are the source of all hope. We ask you to hear and answer all of our prayers today in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Let us pray. May the Holy Spirit coming near, we pray, O Lord, prepare our minds for the divine sacrament, since the Spirit himself is the remission of all sins. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope and peter our bishop the clergy and all your people remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our oh, Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share that peace of Christ with one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, 
and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is number 6.1 in Celebrate in Song, Bread for the World, number 6.1. Pray, hear in your compassion our prayers, O Lord, that as we have been brought from things of the past to new mysteries, so with former ways left behind, we may be made new in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer of O Francis to Mary for help and protection during this pandemic. O Mary, you always we shine, shine on our path as a sign of salvation, salvation and of hope. We entrust, we entrust ourselves, ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping our faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings, and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties that we are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'll encourage you all to today to join us here at 12 o'clock for the rosary today is in solidarity. Pope Francis is praying the rosary but all the churches and shrines throughout the world today for an end to this pandemic. So again, it's also to pray for those impacted by the pandemic. So you can join us at 12 o'clock today for the recitation of the angels and the rosary as we have been doing all the month of May. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace now glorifying the Lord by our own lives. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our missioning hymn is number 416 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Come Holy Spirit, number 416. 